Let's get into BIP 119, unpacking the CTV and how it would change Bitcoin. This is coming from Coindesk and I needed an update on this. I know a lot of people were asking uh, for the overview of this. Hopefully we'll get a very basic review and understanding of BIP 119, which will affect Bitcoin. Right now we can only use Bitcoin scripts to designate when or why Bitcoin is spent, but what if we could use it to designate how a Bitcoin is spent? When you send a Bitcoin transaction currently, it goes a little something like this. You acquire an address from your uh, recipient. You pick out which unspent transaction outputs or UTXOs, what the cool folks call coins, uh, you want to send and you sign a transaction with your private key that proves you authorized the spend. On-chain transactions, more or less, all work this way, except for special transactions that use Bitcoin scripting mechanism. With these transactions, users can utilize a special field to encode instructions for what happens to the coins in that transaction. Time locks are the classic example. Right now, we can only use Bitcoin scripts to designate when or why a Bitcoin is spent, but what if we could use them to designate how a Bitcoin is spent? What if, for instance, we could tell a transaction to only spend a certain amount of Bitcoin or specify that a transaction can only send to a specific address? Enter op check, check template verify or CTV for short. A proposed Bitcoin upgrade which would introduce new scripting logic for how a transaction can spend specific coins. This modularity could, among other things, improve wallet security because in the event of an attack or a hack, the attacker can only send the Bitcoin to an address that you control. Beyond security implications, CTV could also enable financial applications to be more easily deployed on Bitcoin such as on-chain Bitcoin options using smart contracts like discrete log contracts, DLCs. Additionally, CTV could pave the way for payment pools and channel factories, lightning network applications that could be beneficial to custodians, exchanges, and lightning service providers. These payment pools are off-chain, so they could also fur uh, furnish users with better privacy as well. All of these use cases, though, don't guarantee that it'll be Bitcoin's next big upgrade. Enter BIP 119 and, of course, the OP CTV. Currently, Bitcoin transactions go from point A to point B, or more accurately, they are locked up by user A until this user gives user B the ability to unlock them. Right now, we can only set a time lock for these coins. Quote, what could be useful under certain circumstances is that you might want to leave an instruction for how your Bitcoin is spent, end quote, Jeremy Rubin told Coindesk. Rubin is the author of Bitcoin Improvement Proposal 119. These BIPs are a way for Bitcoin contributors, professional and amateur coders alike, to propose changes to Bitcoin's code for review by the wider community. Anyone can view these proposals, make their own, and comment on BIPs via the Bitcoin Core GitHub. In BIP 119, Ruben introduces OpCheck Template Verify, or CTV for short, a proposed upgrade to Bitcoin which creates new spending conditions that allow the receiver, not the sender, to set conditions on how a coin is spent. If that doesn't make sense right now, it will later. The important thing to note is that these new conditions could strengthen cold storage and create more private and scalable multi-party transactions and enable a slew of other applications that are generally marketed as bringing smart contract compatibility to Bitcoin. Quote, in the current Bitcoin locks, everything is limited to things like combination locks. With CTV, you get to do things with a little bit of statefulness, which allows you to say, uh, uh, to say a little bit of what happens next, end quote, says Ruben. This statefulness means that coins with CTV-enabled rules have to have some record for how the coins are supposed to be spent. This record takes the form of a template. So here's how it works. With CTV, users can create a template that creates a specific spending condition for a coin or a UTXO. Unless 
a broadcasted transaction meets the specifications for the CTV transaction template, no one can spend the coins associated with the template. Users embedded this template in the script of a Bitcoin transaction and enforce it using instructions specified by the op CTV instruction in the Bitcoin transaction. In Bitcoin, an opcode gives special instructions for script transactions. Again, when someone creates a transaction to spend the CTV coins, the transaction must match the op CTV template to succeed. Quote, you can think of op CTV like a friend who has a key for you, but will only sign the specific transactions you told them to sign for in advance. However, Bitcoin scripts can specify multiple alternatives. So it is possible to generate an address that says either signature with key or transaction matching template one or transaction matching template two, which makes what you can do with CTV more flexible than just one particular transaction, end quote, said Ruben. Developers often refer to this transaction design where an opcode restricts how a transaction is spent as a covenant. Perhaps the clearest use case for a covenant is improving cold storage and custody. Users could create covenants that specify, for example, the coins in their vault could only be sent to a specific address or that they can only spend 0.0025 Bitcoin at a time. These are just a couple examples that could help in the event of an attack. And that would be really interesting because essentially you could set yourself up with like, you obviously your cold storage wallet that would have this sort of protection. And from the cold storage wallet, you would only send to whatever your hot wallet is. And then in the case of an attack, hopefully now the attacker has to have not only your private key for your cold storage, but also the private key for your hot storage or your warm storage. And it would make it more difficult for them to actually get all the money out. You would also hopefully have some sort of notification of when funds are sent to your uh, hot storage and you'd be like, ah, oh, something's weird here. You could pop in, send it to a new wallet, generate, you know, basically another cold storage wallet, move all the funds out to your hot wallet and then move it back and do another cold wallet. Kind of go from there. CTV would give the Lightning Network new functionality as well, giving users the ability to create payment pools and channel factories where thousands of users can lock up funds that are represented by a single UTXO and a single on-chain transaction. Exchanges, custodians, and mining pools could use these channel factories to pay out thousands of users on-chain with a single UTXO. A scaling win that reduces the block space of all these transactions would otherwise use and users can exit the channels whenever they want, quote, without requiring signatures from both parties, end quote, Ruben writes in a post on one of his websites. Payment pools could also have positive ramifications for user privacy. In addition to payment pools taking place off-chain, dozens of uh, dozens to hundreds to thousands of users can have funds locked up in a transaction that is represented by a single coin on-chain. And they can each close their own channels at their own whims, making it harder overall to trace the funds. Bitcoin mining pools could use this, these payment pools to manage payouts or custodians and users could use them to create cold storage vaults. Will it be Bitcoin's next big upgrade? Plenty of Bitcoin developers and stakeholders see benefits to CTV, but plenty of others say the upgrade needs more careful thought and that there are alternatives to explore. If you guys are wondering my opinion in particular, I think I am of the for of the latter, not the former. So I'm more along the lines of being very, very careful with changes to Bitcoin code and making sure that they are carefully thought out and slow. Like we don't need to, you know, reinvent the wheel here. You can build on top of Bitcoin. We've talked about this with layer one or layer one versus layer two versus layer three options. And I think slow and low, you know, that's how we cook our brisket. That's how I like my Bitcoin, right? Let's, let's take it easy. Some opponents say that, that CTV is unnecessary or that proponents have not clearly articulated the benefits while a more extreme and vocal minority has called the proposal an attack on Bitcoin. And that's interesting. I wonder if we have, we have a link to a Twitter post here. And uh, maybe we go into this in just a second. Perhaps the most sobering and practical re uh, refutation 
uh, or refuting is the fact that Taproot, the upgrade that makes CTV possible, just activated last November and the ecosystem is still adopting it. When a new feature like Segwit or Taproot is soft forked into Bitcoin, it's up to industry stakeholders like wallet providers and exchanges to adopt the code. Going further, the services that new upgrades enable do not build themselves, and it takes time for developers, entrepreneurs, and companies to design products that rely on functionality that has never been seen before or used before. Quote, generally, I do not think Bitcoin is ready for a new soft forked features at all in the short term. Taproot just arrived and there is already so much work to be done to adopt and utilize it, end quote, synonym CEO John Carvalho, uh, something like that, wrote in Bitcoin developer mailing list as a response to one of Ruben's posts. Others feel as if prioritizing CTV makes sense right now. For the more cynical, Big Brother is keeping a closer eye on Bitcoin and its users than ever. And they worry time is running out to implement upgrades which give users greater control over their coins and greater privacy. Or we could continue to use the coins that were specifically developed for privacy and then just transfer them into Bitcoin when we need to basically have that as our option. I'm just saying... Monero, Zcash, there's some there's some good options out there that really smart people have worked on very very specifically for the privacy needs. So moving over and trying to say that that's your argument to push this uh, proposal out, uh, like I'm not necessarily against the proposal. Like I said, I see the benefits there. I just don't think that we need to go ahead and like force anything out at this time. That's, that's my feelings and thoughts on it. Right. Um, for Ruben, it's a matter of giving people improved tools, particularly privacy tools, especially those who live under stringent financial surveillance and control. Quote, imagine a future where people are targeted for having Bitcoin because we did not have a, su have sufficient privacy End quote Ruben said, and I'm just telling you, I think that's where privacy coins come in. Quote, that worries me a lot. A lot of benefit, a lot of the benefit of payment pools is not just in scalability, but in privacy too, because they keep data off chain, end quote. For CTV proponents, the code is more or less vetted. There's been a 5.5 Bitcoin bounty on CTV for nearly six months, and the arguments against it seem to be, quote, we need more time to evaluate alternatives. Now, I think this is the one we leaked over to earlier, and it says, I have yet to see a legitimate counter argument or criticism of BIP 119 other than something better can be done. And I think that is specifically this. Uh, Mario says, for the record, neither OpCTV nor its proposed deployment is an attack on Bitcoin. I also oppose it for now, but let's cool it with the hyperbole or something. Okay. Um, so I think some of these are talking about basically how it's an attack. Um, I don't think I take anybody seriously with flags in their name, but <laughs> uh, I got to get over my bias there. As for alternatives, some point to an AnyPrev output, APO or BIP 118. Another soft fork designed by Blockstream Core Lightning developer, Christian Decker. Others, including Ruben and Decker, see each other's BIPs as complementary. Quote, that's always been my position. They are very much complementary. They have some overlap, but they are not exact ways to achieve the same end. And they were proposed in different contexts. I never had an impression that they were competitors, end quote, said Decker. All of this, of course, assumes the wider Bitcoin community wants these features. Well, it really assumes that the miners want these features, right, at the end of the day. But what is Bitcoin's wider community anyway? That's a part of the problem with these debates. Bitcoin user base spans every continent except Antarctica, and the forum for debate includes social media, email lists, and messaging groups. As Bitcoin's price has grown over the years and the numbers of its active community swells, consensus has become increasingly unwildly, um, especially considering unwieldy. Uh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> especially considering your average person's capacity to fully grasp the uh, minutiae of these changes. 
It's a lot easier to drum up support for an upgrade if you campaign and educate. So Ruben has been on the social media attempting to rally support for CTV. His Twitter name at one point read BIP119 Marketing Department. Ruben's Twitter name change was done very much tongue in cheek because many active Bitcoiners were put off by his advocacy. For sure, debate around the BIP 119 has become acidic. Its designer doesn't mind people scrutinizing his work. What he doesn't want, though, is undue concern from those who lack the literacy to understand CTV on a micro level. Quote, it's fantastic that there are so many people who care so deeply about Bitcoin and will go to the mat to defend it. End quote, Ruben said. That is very good. In this case, a lot of that concern is misplaced, although I understand where a lot of it comes from. Avid Bitcoiners can be ornery, highly skeptical, and dodged or dogged in their defense of Orange Coin. Some, dogged by the way, I'm struggling today. It's fine. I need to take my, my uh, what do you call those things? See, this is the problem. I can't even, what, what, nootropics. There you go. Ah, hey, nootropics. We need nootropics to remember the word nootropics. Uh, some of some of BIP's one night BIP 119's opponents don't like the fact that Ruben is advocating for an upgrade he designed. For his part, Ruben has tweeted to the effect that he doesn't care what gets activated, but something needs to happen if privacy and custody solutions are to improve. While the kernel of the debate may be popping with discussion about BIP 119, the fact that CTV's critics are particularly worked up over Ruben's advocacy of BIP 119 puts a larger debate into focus about Bitcoin's rough consensus. Who decides upgrades? When is code ready to ship? And what's the best way to activate a soft fork to make sure nothing funky happens? With CTV and other promising soft forks like APO waiting in the dugout for their turn, if ever at bat, a new ball game for Bitcoin's rough consensus on protocol evolution is in the opening inning. And even if and even though it looks like the those who disagree are on opposite teams, ultimately everyone is working towards the same goal. They are just puzzling out which rules they want to play by, and that's okay because this is the work, is as Ruben said, that's required to reach a rough consensus. Quote, the developers who disagree on this, we're all friends. Bitcoin is a family, a big dysfunctional family. Ultimately, we, re we really are trying to activate or achieve the same thing. We just don't agree on the way to get there. If one of these ways, dem uh, uh, ways demonstrated that it was the best way to get there, then we would be uh, much more cohesive. I hope you enjoyed this clip from the Crypto Mining Morning Show every Monday through Friday, 7.45 a.m. Pacific and 10.45 a.m. Eastern Time. You can check out more clips here, or if you're interested in checking out the entire live show, you can check that out down here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next Tuesday.